My name's Aaron Curry. I, I grew up in San Antonio and moved away in 1991 to go study art in Chicago. Um, lived there for about 10 years, and now I'm a resident in Los Angeles, uh, where I've been there for about 15 years now. Um, but yeah, growing up, uh, the McNay was always a place. I remember I came for a um, class trip um, in high school, and um, and you know a lot of the works that I've seen here have had such a big impact on me um, that I think really kind of was the beginning of my development as an artist and kind of creating a visual language. Um, so it's always great for all these years that I've been away. I've always come back to the McNay when I'm in town. Um, and yeah. Um. So this is your first project in San Antonio. It is. Um, and th it's sort of a homecoming for you. So how does that feel? Uh, it feels great, actually. Um, this, yeah, I think what I told you, this is I, my, me and my wife, we've been married almost, uh, we're going to be together almost 30 years, but our first date was at the McNay. Um, and I actually got accepted to go to school in Chicago you guys had a portfolio day. Uh, yeah, in the back. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, cool. uh, yeah. Right. And we're really fortunate. We're kind of pre we're premiering some new work in this show, so that's very exciting for us. So it's sort of a combination of some existing work with some work you've created for the space. Um, did you find this space particularly challenging or pretty? Yeah, easy but in to a good with? way. You know, um, it's. Uh, I mean, it's the entry, so it's right. kind of like how do you. Um, I mean, it's a wall, which was great. It's kind of like, okay, I started there. And you've done and, walls and, before. Yeah, I've done walls before. Um, and then, you know, I thought about, we had this opportunity to use the space behind us, and I thought, like, okay, how can I bring in a three-dimensional element? Um, and uh, so, yeah, I thought, you know, to have the ability to kind of connect the two. Right. Um, and this is the first time we've done that. So first time we've had the wall and the three-dimensional space. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I make a lot, you know, my practice is kind of varied, you know, I, um, I make painting, sculpture, um, collage, and um, so it's kind of nice to be able to showcase a little bit of, you know. And I know you, you sort of started as a painter. I did. Right? Yeah. And then moved into the sculpture. Um, and I, I know that you sort of think of the sculpture as just an extension of painting. I do. You know, I think of, it always starts uh, from a, a flat plane, actually, and this is actually a good example to show because all of the the patterning on the back uh, started from drawings and making that I make for the sculptures you know I've talked about this before I, I doodle all the time I draw right. constantly and um, so yeah I like taking this transformation from taking something that starts in a two-dimensional space and then how do you take that and move it into something that's more physical giving right. it form and a right. you know, and real and space volume. yeah and volume um, I, I, I know I enjoy this kind of uh, back and forth between the two where you know it's kind of like creates this experience where things you kind of feel like you're vibrating in between both. Um, right. Some things are represented like you know you'll see a, a form that's represented as a line right. and then in other places it's actually a physical volume. Um, and this this installation includes a piece that has neon, a neon element. Had you worked with neon before? And it's the first time I've used neon. Um, which you know, I had been thinking about it for quite a while, um, but I was I kept thinking like once neon kind of is one of these things you turn it on and it and it kind of absorbs a, a, a large amount of space. Right. Um, it's very seductive. It is. Um, so yeah, and then I kind of resisted it for a while, and then I decided, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and make one. Right. Um, so do you think you'll use neon again or more? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah I have a couple more ideas yeah. of things. Um, yeah. And I like the hanging element here. Had you done that before? Or is that? I've so done some, but I've never made a metal uh, sculpture uh, that hangs. I've done a few wood sculptures. Um, so this is the first time I've done that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, a, a lot of the, the sculptures uh, new for the space here and the right. painting. Yeah. Right. So I've been to your studio in Los Angeles, and um, it's it's quite a little compound in a sense. Um, and I'm just always curious about studio practice. So when you're in your studio, do you work alone? Do you have assistance? Is that how? What's your practice like? Uh, well, yeah. So I, I work at home, and I usually um, I get up very early. Sometimes you know as early as four in the morning. Um, but usually you know by five I'm up and in the studio with a cup Working of coffee. At yeah. Five o'clock. Yeah. 
Um, I like to wake up when everybody's asleep. Um, I used to, when I was younger, I would stay up until three and work. You know, right, um, and you flipped it. And then flip, yeah, I flipped it as I got older. Yeah. Um, because I've learned as the, as the day goes on, I start getting tired and I'm like, uh, right. Um, just, yeah, I think I'm a lot more clear in the morning. Um, so yeah, and I have a few assistants that help with some things. I've gone through phases where I've had uh, quite a few people that help, but I've also realized that I like to be more personal with my work right, um, right. and spend time with it. And um, so yeah, I'll have people that help like with the silk screening um, mm -hmm. and other, you know. Do you work every day? Yeah. Yeah. Was that like important that you're in the studio? It's just something I like doing, you know. Um, you know, sometimes I don't. I, I'm not always productive, but I'm right. I'm in the studio. Right. You know, something. I'm doing something. Right. I mean, sometimes I'm just destroying things, right. but uh, um, but yeah, um, yeah. And I know for for this wall uh, or this project, you kind of designed some things on the computer in advance, and and. Um, so is that a routine part of your practice, or is that because of the space we're in? No, I've, I, you know, it's just a, a, I, a few years ago, um, I bought a computer tablet, because I, I started, I, when I did have a studio that was uh, away from my home, I used to, I would work on sculptures and then take photos of them, and then I would go home at night, and then I used to scan them, I mean, this is before the cell phones, and then I would draw on top of... Right. Oh, uh, hand draw on the, yeah, on the and, scan. Yeah, and then, so now I have a tablet, so where I can actually just take a photo with my iPhone, and then take that photo, and then go, oh, you know, just like work things out, like, oh, maybe this piece should be longer, right. or this one's smaller. Right. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, you think of it as any other tool. You know, I'm not, I'm not good at computers, but, right. I, it, you know, I found a way to make it work for myself. Right. Yeah. And but, but when you're making a painting like the one above us mm -hmm. here, this is much more intuitive. I would imagine. It is, it's sort yeah. of like you're kind of feeling your way as you go. Yeah. But I do. Make. Sometimes I will take a like I'll work on it and take a photo of it, and then I'll be like, okay, what if I put some oh. green here or something? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. Sometimes you actually just have to physically put the paint on. Right. Right. Do you destroy a lot of your own? Yeah, work? I do. Um, is that hard? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> um, I find I'm destroying paintings more. I'll paint over them over and over. Uh -huh. and, um, Is there a painting under this one? Oh, uh, yeah. There's probably like eight paintings. Oh, really? Paintings. Yeah. <laughs> so you can kind of mine back and see yeah. there. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so you went to school in Chicago. You went to the Art Institute? I did. Uh -huh. And, you know, Chicago has such a particular sort of uh, story in the, in the contemporary art world. And, and I know that you're particularly interested in the Chicago Imagist. And those are, you know, I think um, I, I can see your work, I can see elements of that in your work, but they, you know, very rarely dealt with a pure abstraction. Yeah. So how would you say your, how would you say that connects there? Well, I don't, you know, I think my work kind of, it's not pure abstraction to me so much. Uh, I mean, I do, you know, a lot of works are, there's uh, imagery that's representational of things, um, but... I don't know. When I first got to Chicago, I discovered Peter Saul, who wasn't a Chicago artist, but he was showing there, right. and Carl Worsom, who ended up being a teacher of mine, um, and Barbara Rossi. And I think, you know, I don't know. It was just something I was drawn to, like, uh -huh. the graphic nature of their sure. work. Yeah, it's um, very graphic. And um, the colors. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, but I'm also, like, a big fan of art and, um, you know, Albers even right. um, so I don't know they're all they're all on an even playing field for me but I mean I do have my favorites but um, I don't sort of say you know there's no hierarchy in uh -huh. one way of like creating anything or, um. and you say they're you say representational or realistic or in your work or representational I guess uh -huh. um, yeah I mean if you real things yeah not always but uh -huh. yeah I mean, if you look like at the little bang, there's an eye that I actually took from Michelangelo's David right. uh, digital rendering that then we, I had it machined. I altered a bit. I added uh, hatch marks because I like this idea of it was like counting time uh -huh. and it's dealing with space. Um, and then had it machined into, uh, out of metal, which for me was a very similar thing to this. It was taking a two-dimensional drawing and then making something three-dimensional out of it. It was the same thing with taking something that was from a digital two-dimensional plane and bringing it into, you know, sort of real space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we're installing this here at the McNay, um, I know that we, 
you, you had provided all of the silkscreen panels and then we installed it from there. And so there was a little bit of like, uh, what I would like to think of as kind of you kind of lose control in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because somebody else is now interpreting yeah. your work. Yeah. Um, so what's that I like? like that. I mean, you like that? Is yeah. that that's I mean, I wouldn't want you painting on my painting, but, okay. um, but yeah, it's okay. I feel like there's enough control I give, like, you know, some parameters. Um, right. But, I, you know, I like to allow for, like, you know, chance, you right. know, or, right. um, because it's almost like playing in a band or something. It's nice having another sort of uh, voice or something. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. So it becomes... Yeah, so when you saw this wall, you were, you were pleased with the way it turned yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, you guys did a great job. Yeah. 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 I wasn't looking for compliments. I just, I just wondered if, how you felt because it's like, yeah. that's a big I mean, there, a, a trust big me, wall. there have been times when I have gone, okay, we need to change this, and right. it's okay, you know. Um, sure. But, yeah. So I think the first work of yours I saw, I know the first work of yours I saw was in Miami. And it, again, it was just kind of wall surface covering, and then you had some sculptural elements. Um, and so it's interesting that I mean, you're, that's, that's always been part of your vocabulary, kind of working over the surface, because some, some of the artists who've worked on this wall were not sort of wall artists, right? Mm -hmm. They worked more three-dimensionally, or they were painters, and the wall was a challenge. Um, but um, it seemed for you, it sort of was, it was a natural kind of process, right? A natural yeah, I, like, I've been doing this for a few years now, where I like to create a pattern that then I'll put I'll cover or clad the sculpture with because I like this idea of obscuring your sense of it. So once I do take it from a two-dimensional space and drawing, then make a three-dimensional sculpture, um, I'll, like, oftentimes we'll cover the sculpture with that so that from a distance it can disappear into right. the background. And it really, you camouflage, yeah, absolutely. And it takes you as a viewer to walk up to it and walk around it to really sort of then pull it back out of that two-dimensional right. space. And, right. it, and, really nice. and it really, you know, makes you a participant in the work. Right. Um, right. And then, yeah, and then you kind of reflect back in on yourself and how you're sort of walking around and dealing right. with this thing in space. Yeah. Right, and then you, I like the scale, especially of the piece that we have in our, in our window here, because it references the body and it's yeah. scaled to the body, and yeah. so you really kind of relate to the body in that sense and your, your physical space, yeah. like encountering it. But I also like the fact that it's on a, on a platform that you, you can't actually get too close, right? So there's a little distance yeah. there, which then, Really makes you it's more like a conscious. stage or something. Yeah, it's like a stage, yeah. but it makes you more conscious of the body. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of like, that is another way of sort of like, then you sort of pull back and it kind of like sets up this kind of staging or something. Right. And it almost becomes like a framing, almost like the, the wall is framing the painting now. Right, right. Yeah. And I know you've done some really large scale outdoor work, kind of monumental work that you, uh, for the outdoors. Um, have you ever worked in performance? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I did in school. Uh -huh. could you? Uh, but I, I, mean, I play music, but yeah. I haven't done performance art. Or, 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 or I guess about a bit more like we're sets or something like. Oh, I would love to do your, sets. Your actually. sculptural elements yeah. of sets in a performance. Yeah. yeah. Someday I hope to design sets for some sort of play or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 We'll see. Mm -hmm.